That's your winning face. I'd hate to see you lose. We underestimated the constant. Yeah, he's a glorified desk clerk. He's not just after the money. He wants it all. We caught him once. We can do it again. And... Well, we're not the ones who let him escape. You still don't trust her. I don't like executive decision makers. Look, you don't have to follow her, you know? Soon, this will be over. Maybe it's time to think about the future. You have to face the possibility that there's no going back. If the ICA knows what you did, she'll make it right. She always does. We have a fix on Carlisle. Come on. We've got a plane to catch. I hope you like the rain, 47. Miss Burnwood. How did you... I have everyone's number. You really ought to know by now. You planned this. All of it. Don't be silly. I just played the hand I was dealt. We'll find you. You had me. Where'd that get you? We handed you an empire. It's for the best. The partners were complacent, set in their ways. But power is more than just security. Providence can be an agent of change. Surely you understand. Or you will. Soon enough. Thornbridge Manor, the Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The Revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving. She came home. Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? Are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Alexa Carlyle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlyle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlyle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlisle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads, and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, the family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlisle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house, meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. It 
began here, and it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlyle keeps a case file on the Constant. Information that may be helpful in his recapture. So don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side. Thornbridge Manor, the Carlyle family's home for countless generations. The Revenant Alexa Carlyle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlyle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlyle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. The target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private investigator summoned by Alexa Carlyle has arrived at Thornbridge Manor. If you take his place, it may be an opportunity to get close to Madame Carlyle.
What's up? I will have to pad you down if you're coming this way, sir. Hello, sir. Sorry, I just need to do a quick search if you want to get through. Just routine. You like that spy stuff, pal? Sure you do. Everybody loves that stuff. Thank you for your cooperation. Please continue. I'm Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. Ah, Mr. Whitmer. Madame Carlyle has asked me to be of assistance to you. I trust you've had a look around. Are you ready to see the crime scene now? Did you get that now? bird shot on the front screen of Very my well. car, then? If you'll follow I'll me, sir. You sure about that? Maybe go and make absolutely sure. I'm certain. Already checked. Twice. Gotta keep that windscreen clean. I just thought so. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that the staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play, and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside.
You've likely not exhausted the room for clues, 47. Just keep calm. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you.
amazing, for God's sake, Emma. Come here to play funeral and then show up like nothing's the least bit strange. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. This is very useful information, 47. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive means an opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I, I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shit hole? I'm bored out of my mind. So, is that it? Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Anything else you want to know? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. 
Well, how do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Is that all? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. I could listen all day. He poured in my head. That's a little too close. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes. This dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. Anything else I can do to help? Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca. They had a long talk. Th did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and the staff were all the company he had. If that's all, I have a speech to write. Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. <laughs> Can't breathe. Excuse me. Yes, hi, Cassie. It's me again, Edward. I, I know I'm not supposed to leave you messages, and this is the last time, I promise. It's just, uh, I don't know how to handle this whole situation. I don't think I can really. I, I, I can't feel my legs, and my eyes are not working properly. This flicker thing again. Y you can't tell anyone. But well, the thing is, I've been asked to perform the eulogy at the funeral event tomorrow. I know it all sounds so unbelievable. But even though Mother is still alive, we still have to go through with the funeral. I have to write the eulogy. I don't think I can. She will definitely want to read it, and no matter what I... I, I just know she'll be disappointed in me. Okay. My legs are really weird. I, I need to... Sir? 
Rosie, you need to forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own kind. You mean like Chris? Oh, you treat me like shit. All you Someone, need to do is please. Make a video. I need help. some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. Anything else I can do to help? Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca, they had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and the staff are all the company he had. If that's all, I have a speech to write. Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Excuse me. Yes, hi, Cassie. It's me again, Edward. Good, man. Looking good. Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmire, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. Why are you all up in my face, mister? Please, behave.
Yeah, and what's up? Relax, man. I'm trying to get your money. It's just going to take a little longer. Jeez, it has that my fault. That is the door to Rebecca's room. I got word he's upset with Madame Carvalho. I vetted him thoroughly. He's good. Good today, sir. Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmer, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. Emma and Gregory's room. That's the sweet, sweet life. You should come and stay at my place in London. We can have a come over. Give you some tips. I'm quite happy here, thanks. Solicitor upstairs. Why do you think he's here? I think solicitors are mother's favorite kind of people. Can't remember ever having a family event without one tucked away in a room somewhere. Due diligence always trumped the family. No, sorry, sir, but you're just making me feel a little uncomfortable now, okay? I think solicitors are mother's favorite kind of people. Can't remember ever having a family event without one tucked away in a room somewhere. 
Due diligence always trumped the family. I think he's here to cut us from her will. Very ridiculous. Imagine the scandal if the firstborn son didn't pick up the torch. That will never happen. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> uh, the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Is that all? Not very thorough. Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle, but who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger bore. He's better off dead. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Greeting, sir. Get out my face, Sibby. Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmire. You have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. All right there. told Kate about those texts. What did she say? Well, I thought she'd be mad at me, but she just thanked me. Said she understood the position I was in. We had a really good talk about it. Hey, how are you? Excuse me, I have to search you. Only take a minute, okay? I know, I know. I guess I thought she was gonna read into them and freak out. Say I must have done something to provoke. Shit, man. Caroline really did a number on you. No need to panic. I have to give you a pad down if you're coming this way, sir. I'll be done in a sec. See, that wasn't so hard. Please proceed.
Greetings, sir. Rebecca Carla, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book. Which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. What did you think of Zachary? Oh, creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexi used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreeding so customary in these circles. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. That is Alexa Carlyle, unofficial leader of the Provenance Partners, and last one to be alive. Somebody should document this historic moment. Mother apologizing for a major cock-up. Both firsts, I believe. In my own time, Gregory. I'll wait till everybody is here.
focus on sorting everything out, so please do not disturb me with your petty concerns. You are all adults, and as part of the elite, you will eventually have to deal with difficult situations like this. It comes late for most of you, but this is a chance for you to show what you are made of. That will be all. What an exit. No bags got style. Yeah, hey, bro. Shoot your meal. This is your chance. Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmer, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. I want to know what is going on. Not now, Rebecca. I thought I made that clear. Yes, now. Something's really wrong. I started digging and I can see that a lot of our mandates are void. Financial decisions revoked and a freeze on Rebecca. the- Rebecca. And then you give me that token for the vault in London. But only one of two, you need to explain. The token for the bank vault is just a contingency measure. I doubt you'll need it. Christ, mother, that's exactly what I mean. Could you be more cryptic? I am working very hard to figure everything out. I need you to back off and trust that I'm in control. I have contingency plans and will make sure that you get information, useful, factual information when I have it. But for now, I need time to focus. <laughs> Business as usual then. You are cold, mother. And alone, by choice. Don Yates, Alexa Carlyle here. You need to explain yourself. I... ...demand that you return my call ASAP. <laughs> Got it. It's got the package away from here now. Go, go, go. That's Madame Carlyle taken care of. Time to get the file on Arthur Edwards.
what is it now? Everything's coming along outside. Not making the bed the way we have to be ready for the funeral event tomorrow. I would say so, Mr. Fernsby. As long as the birds do. Mr. Fernsby, Mr. Whitmer, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. Things will change around here. I would say so, Mr. Fearnsby. As long as the birds bear. don't make too much of a mess. A May I add that the undertaker, Mr. Parsons, is not But he was such a gentleman. He gave me his coat and all. Rosie, you need to yes, forget I about this much. No yes, good's yes, gonna yes. come of it. Stick to your we'll never get an explanation. <laughs> you mean it's like not Fritz. our place to question he Madame He treated Carla. me like shit. No. All Anna. he wanted to do was play his stupid Anna. video games. Never any romance. I deserve romance. So 41 guests will attend the funeral tomorrow. There's still a lot to see to, but we're in good time, I think. You're in trouble, aren't you, Patrick? No, I'm not. I can smell it. You know, you don't have to be like your father. You can do something real with your life. I have a real life, believe me. I mean, make a difference. Use what you've been handed to do some good. Why don't you mind your own business, Auntie? Oh, you're just like Gregory. Mother spent the long. Last week at her Cyprus estate. Am I right? I'm not at liberty to say, ma'am. Oh, come on. I need to know what's going on. This affects me too, you know. was notarized.
Greetings, sir. That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. Is everything ready for tomorrow? I'm getting a headache from all the decisions. I mean, pram or stroller, comforter or not. Should I ask her to marry me? Where should you go? I mean, it's a big funeral thing to say. Yes, Mr. Fernsby. You'll be fine, Robbie. Kids are great. Mission complete. Well done, 47. Hello, sir. Seven. They're everywhere. Go, get out! It's the Constantine! Shit! 